So, Jack, look, you've seen the movie not only once, and not three only times. two times, but three times. Yeah. What's the verdict? I liked it more each time. The first time I saw it uh, afterwards, I was kind of speechless <laughs> because there's, there is so much uh, fictionalization in it. Um, but, you know, I was prepared for that the second time and I could appreciate it, you know, as a fictional movie, a, you know, a drama, a brilliant story. Not quite a true story, but, mm -hmm. a, you know, engaging and very emotionally powerful story. And then I saw it again yesterday with you and I enjoyed it even more. But, I mean, you sort of have professional stock in this as well, ever since you were a Turing scholar. So mm -hmm. the fact that it's a fictional story, how much of, you know, the tour, how much shine through? I mean, how how much were you willing to sort of bite the apple and say, yeah, okay, this is fiction? And how much were you, ah, this is inaccurate, and this is actually disturbing? What was the balance well, in there? For, at first time, I was I was very disturbed that there was so much blatantly false in it. Um, but, you know, by the time I got to my third viewing, I didn't mind so much that it was false. And what I liked were the, the kind of big picture things that they brought out. I mean, they, they portrayed, although the detail was completely shot, they portrayed very well the incredible significance of Breaking Enigma. And they portrayed Turing as being right at the centre of events, which he was. So kind of they got the two big things right. Uh, and it's less relevant that they got the detail wrong, though it is a shame that they got some of the detail wrong. I mean, Turing was a very fictionalised Turing. They portray him as, you know, kind of insufferable. Turing in the movie is an, an insufferable character right. who, who can't understand um, even an invitation to lunch. He's so socially challenged, <laughs> he can't understand a lunch invitation. So, Jack, give us a brief rundown of this Turing person. Who, who was he? Well, he was uh, he was a genius. I guess that's the you know the one line summary. Um, and he he started pretty young. He was just twenty three when he invented the fundamental principles of the modern computer. He was just a student at the University of Cambridge, a graduate student, um, and he was kind of. Uh, a bit eccentric and a bit quiet and he'd kind of fidget in lectures and he didn't talk to people much. He liked solving problems by himself. Why is it called the imitation game? The imitation I mean, you could call it a lot of things. You could, it, could call it Alan Turing, you know, life and logic, but why did they call it the imitation game? Well, it's, it's a good title, I think, um, and it's very appropriate because Turing invented the imitation game. That was, you know, they're his, his words, the imitation game. It was his test for where, whether a computer can think, whether a computer's intelligent. He constructed this kind of laboratory experiment that he called the imitation game. Nowadays, people call it the Turing test, simply. What's the outline of this test? Um, well, you have the computer that you're testing, and then you have two human players. Um, one is the human foil, and the other is the judge. And so the judge is faced by the other two players. The judge knows that one's a human, one's a computer. The judge can't see them or anything like that. Uh, all the judge can do is communicate with them by kind of email or text or something. But only text, right? It's nonverbal. No, yeah, it's, it's just, you yeah. know, uh, the, no, no speech, no, no visual contact, no fancy measuring devices, nothing. All, all the judge can do is kind of email the contestants and chat with them. Um, and on that basis, the judge has to decide which is the human and which is the computer. During the, towards the end here, Jack, now if we just have to look a little bit uh, towards the scientific impact of sort of Turing's intellectual accomplishments, mm. and you should pick one thing, what should that be? Um, it's so hard. Um, modern cryptanalysis, uh, you know, a whole field. That what about we, AI and artificial um, life or something? Yeah, like? well, all, all of it. You could name any of them. There's, you know, the, the, the modern computer. There's the whole field of uncomputability. Um, there's artificial intelligence. There's artificial life. Um, he, he was the first person to um, kind of uh, try to uh, like grow virtual organisms in a computer. So he worked on artificial life. Jack, are you man or machine? People are machines. So much for the Turing test now. You're no good to me. <laughs>